Those are the doors. That is a chair with a panda on it. Washington, D.C., and you with it. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Hello, I'm here. Welcome to my stream. Um, so I have finished doing all of my uh, Twilight Zone reviews um, for the first season. And so I figured I would just do a quick live stream. I'm going to keep this to about an hour and just talk about the, the Twilight Zone. And in case you didn't know, um, I am going to be giving away one copy of the Twilight Zone, the entire series on DVD. Um, I bought an extra one, so I have one to give away. Um, we're going to do a quiz, and depending on how people do on the quiz, the giveaway may or may not be tied to how well you do. I, I might just give it away to some random commenter. All you have to do is be here and be in the comments, maybe participate in the quiz. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I do want to go ahead and say hi to some of the people who are here. We've got, let's see, well, Connell Kent was here, but now he's on a plane. So he just wanted to make sure that everybody has fun. So if he watches this in replay, thank you and hi. Uh, Lance is here. Hi, Lance. Always great to see you. Um, and he was talking about Eye of the Beholder, one of his favorite episodes. Not a first season episode, but nevertheless, a great episode. Um, let's see, Vim Vanderstraten Vim Vander is here. Hello, Vim. Uh, Sean Ennis is, of course, here. Hello, Sean. Sarah's also here. Awesome. Good to see you. Um, let's see. Just Carolyn is here. Hello. Um, Indy Spotes is also here. Already quoting. Although, a <laughs> dimension not only of side of sound, but of trivia. Nice. I like it. Uh, <laughs> Vim Vanderstraten says, on a plane like William Shatner. Yeah, I gotta make sure, uh, gotta ask Connell Kent if he saw Gremlin on the wing. <laughs> um, Michael Kopris is Kuipers? I, I have no idea how to pronounce your name, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> if it's any consolation, people get my name wrong all the time. Um, so yeah, those people are all here, and if more people come in, I will definitely say hi. I'm gonna be, since I'm doing this solo, I'm gonna be spending a little bit more time on the chat. So hopefully I will be able to get to everybody. So if you have any questions for me, anything you want to talk about, it doesn't even have to be about the Twilight Zone, go right ahead and do so. And I will read and comment if my brain will actually turn on. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. I got to turn the light on. I look all dark. There we go. Um, rhymes with wipers, says Michael Kuipers. So, okay, Kuipers, like the Kuiper belt. That works. Um... Do, 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 do. So everybody's just saying hi. This is what Thrash calls fellowship. So while while everybody's getting getting situated, uh, I just want to talk about some of my favorite episodes from the first season. Um, you got some of the big ones, of course, like um, Time Enough at Last with Burgess Meredith and the End of the World. Um, can you get a wrench? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, if I can figure out how. <laughs> I don't really know how to do that. Um, I've never had to, I've never needed one. But if you want to like, hold on. Do, 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 do. Give me a minute. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mute. Do. Uh, how do I give you a wrench? Add as moderator. Do, do, do. Um, yep. Okay. You are now a standard moderator, Lance. You are my first moderator. Congratulations. <laughs> um, and somebody get Tug a wrench so he can get Lance a wrench, says Indy. No, I got it. I figured it out. I am smart. S-M-R-T. Um, oh, Sarah wants one too. All right. Wrenches for everyone. Who wants one? As long as I know you. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. Add as moderator. Standard moderator. Save. Okay. Sarah is also a moderator now. Um, let's see. Yep, there you go, Lance. There's your moderator. 
Oh, Telly Savalas and the Dummy. Also not Sir First Season, but another great one. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but a great one. Um, I think that one was voted one of the scariest or something. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of like TV Guide um, lists of, of Twilight Zone. <clears throat> sorry. Of Twilight Zone episodes is voted for by the viewers of like the scariest episode, the best episode, the worst episode, so on and so forth. Um, <laughs> um, Indy Spote says, Wrench is for everyone. I believe that was Millard Fillmore's campaign slogan. Oh, Sean Innes wants an actual blue wrench. If anybody has an actual blue wrench, get Sean Innes' details from him and send him one. Uh, he could really use it. Um, and if you got a purple one, send it to me. My wife loves purple tools. Uh, let's see, what else? Do, 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 do. Um, oh, I was talking about my, some of my favorite episodes. And we talked about Time Enough at last. Great one. Um, I also really like the very first episode. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to talk about that. Because that, that's going to give away questions from my quiz. I will start my quiz at like when we're like 10 minutes in. Just give a little bit more time for people to come in. This is what happens when you drink a soda right before going on a live stream. You just... It's really hard to speak at the moment. <laughs> uh, Lance Ryan, Lance says, uh, that. Okay, let me try that again with less brain damage. Lance says, or a Smurf wrench, which I think is really funny. I would love a Smurf wrench. I've got a Smurf. I don't know if you can see him. He's he's back there behind Logan's run, like right there. That's my Smurf. Very first thing I ever got at a Comic-Con. Actually, my brother bought it for me. I didn't get it myself. But yes, Twilight Zone is epic AF. Um, if my channel weren't so family friendly, I would say that as it properly is, should be <laughs> because people who've watched my other stream, uh, for, from here to paternity know that, uh, I'm not a PG person by nature, <laughs> but this channel, I try to keep somewhat PG, uh, live streams can get a little loose. Um, but definitely not in the first 10 minutes or so, because the algorithm gets really mean about that sort of thing. There's certain words you can't say, you know, George Carlin, he used to talk about the seven dirty words you can't say on TV. And there's like 7,000 words you can't say on YouTube. It's really, it, it bugs me that YouTube is more puritanical than network TV ever was. I recently got a uh, age restriction on one of my Twilight Zone videos, actually, for a 50s TV commercial because it glorified smoking. <laughs> and that's just, come on, man. <laughs> Luckily, age restriction isn't the, exactly the same as demonetization. It doesn't really hurt my channel, but it does hurt that video. Like, that video doesn't get pushed by the algorithm as much, which is kind of annoying. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but a lot of YouTubers are complaining about it. The last couple of months, the algorithm has been really mean to just about everybody. Um, a lot of people are running out of, like, their ad revenue has gone down by as much as 50% or so. Um, and yeah, it's happened on my channel too. My like two cents has gone down to about one cent. So <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, other episodes from the first season that I really liked that don't spoil the um, the quiz. Uh, do, 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 do. What's that one with um, Cecil Kellaway where he's, uh, he's like an alien on an alien planet. Uh, what's the name of it? Damn it. Um, I'll find it. I'll find it. I got a list right here. I'm just going through it. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, Elegy. Yeah, yeah, Elegy. We're like three astronauts touch down and it's like Earth, but everything's frozen. Um, and, and you find out Cecil Kellaway is like on this planet and he's not frozen and he's talking to them. And it turns out he's an android, um, an alien android who is like taking people who've died and putting them in this museum of like the 1950s. And it's just like, it's just this weird, creepy Americana where everything is frozen. I love it. It's a good episode. Um, ah, Denny Staten is here. Thank you, Denny. Oh, and Elegy. See, a lot of you have already got, already got your, your quiz primed. Um, to be honest, I think YouTube's prudishness is a very American thing. You're right. Without getting too political, America is very puritanical. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly so for such a country that wants to be free. Um, do, do, do. So everybody's just saying hi. I think since we're past the 10 minute mark, I'm going to go ahead and do the quiz. And unlike Thresh, I've actually got 
I've already made like little slides. That's the word I'm looking for. You know, I should take like some CoQ10 or some brain stuff before I start these streams so that it actually works up there. But I don't know. Anyway, the, what is the name of the very first aired episode of The Twilight Zone? A, where is everybody? B, time enough at last? C, a world of his own? Or D, the monsters are due on Maple Street? I've already kind of spoiled a little bit, <laughs> but only one of them. So, uh, let's see. It looks like people are already getting the getting the right answer, but I'll give it I'll give it a little bit more time. Um, this is an easy one. I start off easy. Most of these are going to be easy. I tried to keep it light, but there's a couple that might trip you up. So we'll see. Um, I didn't want it to be too easy because then everybody's going to get ten out of ten. And who am I gonna who am I gonna give this uh this wonderful DVD set to? Oh, uh, let's see. Yes, let's see. Indy was the first. On the trigger, uh, Lance, Just Carolyn, Sean, you all got it. It is A, where is everybody? That is the correct answer. So let's move on to question number two. Which of these actors did not guest star in the first season of The Twilight Zone? Is it Burgess Meredith, Charles Gray, Kevin McCarthy, or Roddy McDowell? Um, again, this person did not guest star in the first season of The Twilight Zone. In fact, they didn't guest star in The Twilight Zone at all. I wanted to make sure it wasn't too much of a trick question for you. Um, so let's see. Yep, answers are coming in already. And once again, Indy is the first one out of the gate with the correct answer. It is B, Charles Gray. Charles Gray was not in the first season of The Twilight Zone. In fact, he wasn't in The Twilight Zone at all. I may have Charles Gray on the mind because I'm working on a video on the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which will come out next week and probably also get age restricted <laughs> into oblivion. <laughs> but no, Kevin McCarthy was in this season. He was in the episode where he is uh, extremely old. Uh, long live Walter Jameson. Yeah, he's like an English professor who's been around for thousands of years, or at least 1,000 years. Yeah, something like that. Um... Let's see, Burgess Meredith, of course, Time Enough at Last, and Roddy McDowell. Um, that was another one where he crashed on an alien planet, and he was the lone survivor, and it was Mars. It was Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people are, like, all over. That's another good one. Um, but yeah, Charles Gray. Blofeld was never in the Twilight Zone. Moving on. Number three, in the episode The Fever, in which a couple spend time in Las Vegas... What object appears to talk to our main character, Franklin? A, a stack of coins, B, a martini, C, a slot machine, or D, the Bellagio fountain? Again, in the episode The Fever, in which a couple spend time in Las Vegas, what object appears to talk to our main character, Franklin? Is it a stack of coins, a martini, a slot machine, or the Bellagio fountain? And once again, pretty much everybody gets this right. <laughs> Starting with Indy, once again, it's a slot machine. Um, I thought this one would be a little bit tricky for people who've watched my video on it because I did show a stack of coins because I, I showed a scene from SpongeBob, but I guess not. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, and Vim is right. Gray was, uh, Gray was in Diamonds Are Forever. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, moving on. Next one. Which of these first season episodes features Jack Klugman in a starring role? Once again, is it Time Enough at Last, Long Live Walter Jameson, Mr. Denton on Doomsday, or A Passage for Trumpet? Let's see how you do on this one. Once again, which of these first season episodes features Jack Klugman in a starring role? Time Enough at Last, Long Live Walter Jameson, Mr. Denton on Doomsday, or A Passage for Trumpet? Um, it looks like once again, Indy is the first on the trigger, and he is also correct. Just like Just Carowin, Sean Innes, Lance, you guys are all getting it right. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure some of these later ones are harder. Um, yes, it is in fact D, a passage for Trumpet. Um, I really, really like this episode. I think Jack Klugman is really, really good at being the alcoholic trying to reform his life and just failing miserably and then you know going down the the path of self-elimination that's another reason i can't another word i can't say on youtube um and winds up you know talking to gabriel and his horn and getting a second chance at life it's a really good episode um 
Ah, thank you very much, Sarah. Very much appreciate it. Uh, do, do, do. I've, I've, I've managed to catch a couple of your streams in the last week or two. Um, and it's a blast. If, if you don't know, uh, my flock is everywhere. Sarah, she's got a stream on her channel. She's streaming constantly. She streams a lot. Um, and it's wild. It's a wild time and I love it. It's, it's, it's more of that. Uh, it's not PG, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> um, do, do, do. Why is Sarah not in the chat? I don't know. She should be. Okay, uh, moving on to the next question. We're at the halfway point. Which of these famed science fiction writers did not write for The Twilight Zone? Harlan Ellison, Richard Matheson, George Clayton Johnson, or Charles Beaumont? Again, which of these famed science fiction writers did not write for The Twilight Zone? Harlan Ellison, Richard Matheson, George Clayton Johnson, or Charles Beaumont? Now, see, if I got this question, I'd probably be completely lost because I would think all four of these definitely wrote for the Twilight Zone. Um, but one of them didn't. And let's see, we've got a couple of different answers. That's good. Finally, we, we don't have everybody getting the right answer. <laughs> Indy's the first on the mark saying A, Harlan Ellison. I got to get my mouse over here now. Um, Just Carowin also says A. Sean says C. Lance says A. Uh, Sarah says I should come on sometime. Um, yeah, I probably will one day. And it'll be nice and free, and I can say whatever I want. Oh, it'll be nice. <laughs> um, you'll get to see a different side of me. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do that um, when I have time. <laughs> I got to finish doing this uh, Raggy Heart Picture Show thing. It's, it's going to be a big one. Uh, anyway, the correct answer is, yes, A, Harlan Ellison. Harlan Ellison... Um, he did write for TV a lot, but he never wrote for The Twilight Zone, which I found very strange. I just assumed he had. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're at the halfway point, and just like Thrash likes to do, and just like Dave likes to do sometimes, go ahead and tell me your scores in the chat. I'm guessing most of you have five for five. <laughs> so we'll see. Hold on, I think somebody's knocking on my door. Is somebody knocking on my door? No. Okay. Uh... You're right, he did, you're right, Indy. He did write for the, uh, if I can get my mouse in the right place. He did write for the 80s remakes. You are correct. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, Sean says three for five. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is Rod Serling at my door. If I open that door, I'm going to go into the Twilight Zone. Do, do, do. I'm looking forward to when I get to season two and I get the, uh, the like more iconic opening because like season one, it has the opening you see in the background here um, where, you know, it's, it's called the void. Um, but season two and moving on after that, I think the opening is is more the traditional Twilight Zone. That you remember where it's in space and you got like the eye and the opening door flying at you and stuff like that. Um, yeah, see, I have some Twilight Zone special effects going on in my own office. <laughs> okay, uh, Just Carolyn is five for five. Indy is also five for five. Okay, we'll see how we do. Maybe I'm making these a little too easy. Maybe I should maybe I should make a few more hard ones. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Number six. In the episode, and when the sky was opened, how many astronauts originally returned from space? Is it one, two, three, or four? Again, in the episode, and when the sky was opened, how many astronauts originally returned from space? Now, see, this one might be a little tricky, so we'll see how you do. Um, pay no attention to Indy, because he might be lying to you. <laughs> but no, you all get it right. It was, in fact, C. Um, Indy was correct, as was Sean, as was Lance, as was just Carolyn. Man, you guys are on the ball. You guys are doing great. Um... Indy's five for five, Lance is five for five. Okay, and now you're both six for six as well. Uh, so that's moving on. Number seven, either accidentally or on purpose, which science fiction writer accused Rod Serling of plagiarizing his work for the pilot episode of the series? Is it Arthur C. Clarke, Ray Bradbury, Isaac Asimov, or Robert Heinlein? Those are four of my favorite sci-fi writers. <laughs> Is it Arthur C. Clarke, Ray Bradbury, Isaac Asimov, or Robert Heinlein? Let's see. Let's see how you do on this one. I'm curious to see if this one is as easy as I think it is. Okay, Sean seems to think it's B. We'll see. I'm not I'm not giving away the answer yet. 
because you're the only answer so far. Just Carowin also thinks it's B. Okay, and then Lance also, okay, it's B. <laughs> it is, in fact, Ray Bradbury. Um, whether or not Rod Sterling did it on purpose is a, is a matter of some contention. And Ray Bradbury, for the longest time, didn't really like take it personally. He 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 took a call from Rod Sterling apologizing profusely about it. Um, Rod Sterling thought that he did it accidentally. Um, he didn't do it on purpose. It just was an idea he had in his brain because he'd read Br Ray Bradbury's story. This happened a lot on The Twilight Zone. A lot of people accused Rod Sterling of plagiarizing. But you also have to remember Rod Sterling read... Well, he himself didn't read all of them. But he did read a lot of the story ideas that were sent to him for the Twilight Zone, because it was one of those shows with an open policy. Um, anybody could send in a script, right? So he read all the ones that got past the initial phase. So he read maybe about like 50, uh, 50 stories, 50 story treatments for, you know, every episode, you know, like, so he read a lot. So he had a lot of these ideas coming in and, you know, it was just inevitable that, that a lot of the stuff that he would write, because he wrote most of the episodes of the show, I think it's something like 70%. A lot of those ideas would find their way onto the screen without giving the writer appropriate credit. So that that's one of the reasons TV shows don't really do the open policy anymore is because it got too tricky. Um, and it's a shame because I feel like, especially in shows like Star Trek, you look at Star Trek before when they had the open policy, I think the, the episodes were a lot more interesting and more varied. And then somewhere like halfway through Next Generation, they had to stop and go with you know their staple of writers and their writer's room and all that stuff. Um, and new WGA rules and all that. I think the episodes are, they're still good, but they're not as varied and they're not as, they're not as playful with the genre. Like they don't try as many new things. Um, I could do a whole video on that. Uh, and maybe I will for my Patreons. If I ever get back to making my bonus videos for my patrons, I've had an episode on Dr. No. I've already written it. I've already recorded my audio and I've just had it in the editing suite for like three or four months now. I've got to finish it. <laughs> um let's see uh i haven't been paying attention to the chat like i said it would i'm terrible uh ray is epic definitely yes ray bradbury um i think more than any of the ones on the screen i think he was the one who had the most range because ray bradbury didn't just write science fiction i mean yeah arthur c clark asimov and heinlein all did write other things but they were mostly known for their sci-fi asimov also wrote some mysteries and of course wrote a lot of nonfiction. But Bradbury, I think, was the one who didn't like to be tied down to genre. He deliberately tried to avoid that. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, Ray Bradbury also had his own anthology series. That's true. Uh, he and Rod Serling, I think, did eventually have a falling out. But it wasn't about this. It was about something else. Uh, I don't know the whole story, so I'm not going to talk about it because I, I can't talk about it intelligently. And Thrash is here. Okay, Thrash. Hello. A tad late. We'll watch the rest in replay. Not a problem. I'm glad you could make it. Um, let's see. I, like I told everybody else, I'm, I'm only going to do about an hour. Um, to be honest, I've got like a really dry throat. <clears throat> I think it's it, I think it's allergies more than anything else. I don't think I'm sick or anything. But if I go too long, I'm going to lose my voice. So I, I can already feel it, you know. Um, do, do, do. Yep, everybody's just saying hi to Thrash because Thrash is the best. Um, yeah, without Thrash or Dave, I never would have started doing the, these live streams. Like... You guys inspire me so much, um, especially you, Thrash. Just your ability to just go on and talk about anything for like an hour and a half every week. Like, that's just, it's incredible. And the fellowship you have developed and the, the community that you have nurtured has been like the nicest, coolest, most interesting community on YouTube. Um, you know, I've, I've gone into other people's live streams and their chats are not nearly as heartwarming as yours um and this goes for dave too because a lot of the it's mostly the same people so yeah anyway now that i've said that gotten that out of the way <laughs> um do, do, do. oh uh lance says that ian is doing well that's very good to hear uh i have chatted with him a little bit on facebook um and yeah he does seem to be doing a lot better uh do 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 <laughs> sean says thanks for reminding me i gotta take my allergy meds or the headaches will come tell me i know about that um, yes, Danny Staten, Thrash's superpower is in fact talk. Don't worry, I'll get back to the chat in just a second. I got to catch up. <laughs> um, Lance is already asking about the next trivia, which is going to be tonight. Um, let's see. Just Carolyn says, pleased to meet you, Thrash. 
And Thrash says, you are too kind. I am too kind, but I really do mean it from the bottom of my heart, Thrash. You are awesome. You are a guiding star. Um, and the community that you've been able to nurture and who have, a lot of them have come onto my channel, like I've bled them from you a little bit. Um, I don't I feel like, I feel like they're more important to me than the subscriber count. Like, honestly, um, I, I love you guys. Anyway, I'm not going to get too sentimental. We're just going to move on. Okay, question number eight. Which famous actor was approached to read the narration for the series, but asked for too high a price, resulting in Rod Serling doing it himself? Um, and Rod Serling made that decision at the very last minute. It was like within two days of the episode being finalized that he made the decision. Um, A, Kirk Douglas, B, Harry Belafonte, C, Jimmy Stewart, or D, Orson Welles. Any one of those four would have been awesome. I, they all four, all four of them have incredible voices. Again, which famous actor was approached to read the narration for the series but asked for too high a price, resulting in Rod Serling doing it himself? Kirk Douglas, Harry Belafonte, Jimmy Stewart, Orson Welles. And yes, you all got it right. Thrash, Just Caro, and Sean, Lance, you all are correct. It is, in fact, D, Orson Welles. I figured this one most people would know. This is a very well-known Twilight Zone trivia. Um, do, do, do. let's move on number nine okay this one might be a little tricky martin landau memorably wears what in the episode mr denton on doomsday is it an opaque space helmet a black hat a white cape or thick glasses again martin landau memorably wears what in the episode mr denton on doomsday let's see if any of you know this one um, I think if you think about it for more than a few seconds, you should be able to figure it out. As long as you know what episode I'm talking about, you should get it. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, Thrash is going to do the love boat. Awesome. Yes, Orson Welles did a lot of narration. He also did a lot of voice work, surprisingly. Um, he, he's uh, probably my favorite character in the Transformers movie. <laughs> the animated one, not the my Bruckheimer, whatever, my nonsense. Um, do do do. Let's see. Almost everybody got this one right. It is, in fact, a black cape, or I mean, a black hat, not a black cape. Black, black hat. <laughs> yeah, he was a black hat, and he was, he was so deliciously evil in that. It, it's a, it's, it's fun. I, I do, I do really enjoy. Every once in a while, the Twilight Zone and the Outer Limits will go to like the Old West, and it's always fun. It's always entertaining. Um, do do do. Moving on to the last question, number ten. What is the name of the last aired episode of the first season of The Twilight Zone? Is it Where Is Everybody, Time Enough at Last, A World of His Own, or The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street? Again, what is the last episode of the first season of The Twilight Zone? Um, <clears throat> if you're Googling, I'll know. I'll just know. <laughs> but no, this one's, this one's also pretty easy. But I do have a bonus question. A bonus question that I think is a little bit harder than all the other questions I've asked so far. So... Let's see, everybody is saying C, a world of his own, and you are all correct. Indy, Just Carowin, Lance, Thrash, Sean. No, Sean said D, actually. Uh, the Monsters of Doom on Maple Street is a great episode. I love it, but it's not the last episode of the first season. Okay, so, since I mentioned Time Enough at Last about five times during the course of the quiz, the last question, the bonus question, is in fact about Time Enough at Last. At what time of day does the nuclear bomb go off in the episode Time Enough at Last? Is it 9.32 a.m., 11.21 a.m., 12.24 a.m., or 4.33 p.m.? Those are your chances. Uh, those are your questions. And uh, I don't know what... Uh, yeah, I thought this one might be a little trickier. So don't Google it. Don't do it. <laughs> um, do, do, do. All right, you guys are making me, are convincing me that I definitely have to make these these quizzes much, much, much harder. Uh, because you're all getting it right. Thrash, Just Carolyn, Sean Ennis, Lance, you're all right. It was C. It was lunch. He was on his lunch break um, reading in the vault. Yep. Uh, I thought maybe some of you would think lunch was a little early. <laughs> or maybe you just forget that it was lunchtime. In my brain, I always think it happens in the afternoon. So I thought 4.33. But yeah, uh, he takes his lunch break at noon. And if you look at his watch after the bomb goes off, it gets stuck at 1224. So yeah, that's what time the nuclear bomb goes off. Ah, okay, so since you can go ahead and tell me what your score is, but since most people seem to have gotten everything right, I'm just going to... 
I'm just going to pick randomly. Uh, I have a little thing here on my computer. I don't have a... I don't know if I can share it. But let me just write down your names real quick. Everybody who's here and who has been participating will have a chance. So let's see. We got Lance. We got... Well, Indy actually already messaged me ahead of time, told me he already had this DVD set. So he put himself out of contention, even though he was participating in the quiz, which is fine. Um, I'll go ahead and add you, Thrash. Why not? Uh, Just Carolyn. Sean. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Lance has 11 out of 11. Just Carolyn has 11 out of 11. Um... Sarah, I know you haven't really been answering questions, but you know, you're here. Why not? <clears throat> and same with them. You're here. Uh, do, do, do. Danny, if you're still here, including you too, why not? Okay. <clears throat> See, I got to think that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit the button over here. Oh, I can. Well, you didn't win, Vim, so it's okay. Uh, it actually is going to Lance, believe it or not. And he was begging me beforehand to win, so he got lucky. My randomizer picked Lance. Um, so there you go, Lance. You get it. Um, since you're on my Facebook, you can just message me your address and I'll mail it to you. Uh, let's see. Let me just run it again just to see who else could win. Uh, second place was, I don't have a consolation prize, sorry, but just Carolyn, you got second. I'm going to do it one more time. Let's see, third place, third place, third place is Vim, because I didn't actually take you off, but, but yeah, there you go. Lance wins. Congratulations to Lance. Um, so yeah, now I can talk about the first episode, Where Is Everybody? I really like how it sets the stage for the Twilight Zone, just that really spooky atmosphere where a guy enters a town and there's just nobody there. I just, it's just, the whole episode is just him freaking out because there's nobody around and trying to figure out what's going on. I love it. Yeah, Lance, there you go. Uh, uh, text me on Messenger your address and I'll mail it to you. Um, I happen to know you don't live too far, so hopefully you get it fast. Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry. I'm going to mute because I'm going to blow my nose. Uh. I hit the wrong button. I didn't actually mute, so you got to hear that. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what I'm gonna do next. Um, because I thought about going back to the outer limits, but I wanted to take a little break first, do something else. Damn it. Sorry. Uh, so uh, I decided to pick an up a show that the first season actually only has nine episodes because there was a writer strike. Um, so, and I'm going to go back to what, the way I did it with the Outer Limits and do one a week. Um, I'll probably start in a couple of weeks. I'll probably take a couple of weeks off just to breathe and get ready for the summer. And then during the summer, I'll cover this and uh, then we'll probably go back to the Outer Limits after that. I haven't decided. We'll see. Um, and then eventually I will get back to the Twilight Zone. I promise I will eventually finish the Twilight Zone. Even if I'm 75 by the time I get there, I will do it. I promise. <laughs> you can take that to the bank. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a preview of what I'm covering next. From Sacramento, California, at 185, Clarence, Kid, Cody. Play it again, Sam. I mentioned babies and you fainted. Thank you. Yes, Quantum Leap. Um, probably one of my favorite shows growing up. Uh, I, I actually, my parents pretended to be rich, so they bought me a v VCR when I was little, um, and I kept it in my room. And I used to record episodes of Night Court and Quantum Leap. And I would just watch them constantly. 
I was a weird kid. I would sleep with the TV on and I would usually be playing one of these tapes that was either Night Court or Quantum Leap or sometimes even a mix of both. Um, so I, I really, really love Quantum Leap and I'm not going to be objective about it at all. I'm just going to gush about it for, for nine episodes and then we'll go back to the outer limits. <laughs> um, the Quantum, uh, I never actually saw the remake. I heard it just recently got canceled after two seasons. Uh, I'll probably watch it one day. Um, same with Night Court. I haven't watched the reboot because... Eh. <laughs> uh, but yes, Just Carolyn, Scott Bakula is always fun. And yes, Lance, I saw that you sent me your address. Uh, I will get this out to you this week. Um, no promises. I tend to procrastinate. It might be a while. We'll see. <laughs> but I'll try to do it this week. Um, no thrash. It is not always sunny in Pennsylvania. <laughs> or Philadelphia. Whatever. Uh, Lance says, good quiz. Thank you. Uh, I did work at that. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got good questions. Um, next time I do this, I might make a few more, I'll do mostly easy questions again, but I will throw, I'll sprinkle in a few more difficult ones. Um, and we'll see. Cause uh, like I said, I know Quantum Leap inside and out. So if I'm going to do one of these quizzes on the first season of Quantum Leap, I can definitely make them hard. Uh, Sean Ennis got six out of 10 plus the bonus question. No shame, no shame at all. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to get back to the Twilight Zone because the first season only has a couple of like really big episodes. Like the monsters are doing Maple Street, Time Enough at Last. Those are probably the only like ones that general audiences know off the back of their hand. Um, but there's so many great episodes of the Twilight Zone. Like the list is so long that I, I can't abandon it forever. But I did promise to go back to the Outer Limits, which um, I think the second season is shorter than the first season. So that too won't take too long. So hopefully... By this time next year, I'll be back on Twilight Zone. We'll see. Um, and yeah, Lance agrees that an easy mix and a hard mix are good. Cool. Um, I think I might have to call it early. I know I said I was going to go for an hour. But if you guys have any questions or anything you want me to talk about, just, just put it in the chat. I will try to get to you. Um, King Nine will return. <laughs> yes. Do, do, do. Yes, Kant's one, correct. Uh, so yeah, like I said, next week I will have a video on the Rocky Horror Picture Show, um, which will probably get demonetized from Orbit, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. <laughs> um, and then a week after that, I'm doing another live stream. Uh, Thrash and Lance are, of course, invited to be there. Uh, Scott and Damien are also going to be there, of course. And we're going to talk about disaster movies. Um, if anybody else wants to come on my show and come on my streams, I only do them once every other week, but if anybody wants to come on, you're more than free to just let me know and I'll send you the link. Um, I don't mind having a crowd. I really don't. Ah, Tracy just shown up. Hello, Tracy. Um, I'm going to call it pretty soon. Like we're only going to do this for a few more minutes, but if there's anything you want, want to talk about, go right ahead. Um, great to see you. Of course. Uh, let's see. Just Carolyn says that um, having he, she, I don't know, it's having a lot of fun introducing one of their besties to Twilight Zone, which is great. Um, I've tried to get my son into it, but he's he's very skeptical of black and white movies. Oh, so, yeah. You win some, you lose some. Um, I did make him watch Rocky Horror Picture Show, though, <laughs> which he said was cursed. That, that was the, his words. He, it's cursed. He's 15. So, um, and yes, Thrash. I will be there tonight at 7.30, hopefully. Um, I can never fully promise, because you never know what happens on Sunday nights. But I'll, I'll, I'll try. Um, and The Love Boat, right. Um, I know for a while there, Lance was trying to get me to make a t-shirt that was the tugboat. I mean, tug for the unapologetic heat, for those who don't know. Um, do, 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 do. Yep, see? Um, Tracy Lance won the DVDs. So he's going to get them. <laughs> wow, Sean, you're pretty far back if I just blew my nose. <laughs> uh, did you do? Oh, uh, yeah, Amazing Stories. I should do that. I can I can get my son to watch Amazing Stories. Um, he does like 80s a lot. So I think I can I think I can work with that. That's a really good idea, Indy. Um, and I haven't seen it since the 80s. So it'd be fun to go back to it. Um, I did recently watch there's the one episode with the mummy. Um, I watched it for one of my videos. I can't remember why, um, but it, it's fun. It, it was a good episode. I really liked it. Um, 
<laughs> no, sir, I'm not going to make that shirt. Like, uh, I I will do merch eventually. Um, it's not high on my priority list. And I've got a graphic designer guy, um, and his life is really, really hectic. So whenever he has time to work on it, he can work on it. But I'm not going to pressure him. <laughs> ah, Tracy noticed my dolly. Um, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, thanks. Um, I have a lot of dolly in this house. I actually have um, a print of... Like probably the most expensive thing in my house is a dolly print um from uh, Dante's Inferno, which is very cool. Um that was my graduation present from high my graduation from high school. <laughs> a long, long time ago. Um I've always been a fan of Dolly. Um and when I lived down in Orlando, I used to, you know, once every six months or so make the pilgrimage out to St. Petersburg where they have a Dolly Museum, which is fantastic. You get to see like the full sized uh, the really, really big ones like uh, Columbus uh, landing on, on the shores of America and um, the persistence of memory, obviously. You know, it has it has a lot of really great original Dolly work in St. Petersburg, Florida. I highly recommend if anybody's nearby, go. It's great. It's a great place to visit. Um, get Unsolved Mysteries also would be fun. I loved Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> um do I have a Christmas tree in the background? I do, in fact, have a Christmas tree. Um, it used to have the Invisible Man on it, but he's he's moved. Oh, he's up there now. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I had it lying around, and that corner was kind of empty, so I just left it there. <laughs> um, my son likes to get little Christmas trees for his room, and um, you know, every year he wants to do one, so. That one was still in perfect working order, so I figured I'd just put it in my office because I got space. Why not? Um, that sounds fabulous. I don't remember what I said that sounds fabulous, but okay. <laughs> oh, uh, the Dolly Museum is probably what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it's, it's an experience. And like I said, I used to go there like every six months or so for years. I love that place. <laughs> because he's wearing clothes. That's how I can tell the Invisible Man is moving. <laughs> Let me bring him closer so you can see him. He's very cute. See, here's my Invisible Man. My Claude Rains Invisible Man. Yep. I wish I could take off the bandages, but like his hands are kind of clear. See? It's pretty cool. Um, I have gone on record multiple times saying that the Invisible Man is my favorite. Um... Universal classic monster, and I still stand by that. Even though I love the Wolfman, and I love Frankenstein, and I love Dracula, I love them all. Um, but the Invisible Man is probably my favorite, and I think it all comes down to Claude Rains. Although Vincent Price in the sequel is also pretty darn good, um, because I love Vincent Price. St. Louis native, by the way. I have to say that since I live near St. Louis. <laughs> um, eighties TV action series trivia that would be fun. Uh, I could I could totally do good on that. Um, although, I don't know. Most of my action TV shows... I did watch a few in the 80s, but maybe not all... No, maybe not enough. Um, would Magnum P.I. count as action? I think so. Um, was it Airwolf? I used to watch that. I uh, can't remember any of <laughs> off my head. I'm sure there are more that I definitely watched. Um, oh, Knight Rider, of course. I freaking loved Knight Rider. Michael Knight. <laughs> I always wanted a kit car. Like, not a kit car, but you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, um, I can already hear my voice going. We're at 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, the A-Team, obviously. And, yeah, Blue Thunder is what I was thinking of, not Airwolf. Um, yeah, those are all good. Anyway, like I said, I got to stop or else I will lose my voice. And that will not make my family happy. But thank you all for being here. And thank you all for watching my... Uh, my, my my reviews of the Twilight Zone, if you did, in fact, watch them. And if you didn't, you need to go back and watch them now. <laughs> um, uh, I hope you all are looking forward to Quantum Leap, because I know I am. I'm really, really psyched. Um, because I just, I, just, I just love Quantum Leap. Um, and yeah, here, let me drink some water real quick. Uh, anyway, yeah, thank you again. Um, and Sarah, I'll get in touch with you later. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find a time where I can come onto your stream and say whatever the heck I want. And uh, one of those things that I will say is not the word heck. <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah. Thank you, and good night.